The Air Force of Israel used more than 100 planes during the night attack on Iran. The Jerusalem Post newspaper published information about this. More than 100 planes, including F-35 fighters, took part in the attack on Iran at a distance of 2,000 kilometers, the publication wrote. It is noted that the Israeli Air Force used the newest American F-35 fighters during the attack. Israeli military spokesman, Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, confirmed that manufacturing facilities, as well as, Iran's surface-to-air missile arrays and Iranian aerial capabilities that were intended to restrict Israel's aerial freedom of operation in Iran, had been hit. He added, the targets that were struck were selected from a broad target bank, targets of various types, and we will be able to select additional targets from it and strike them if required. It should be noted that local and foreign media reported that explosions were heard in Tehran. Israel says that its airstrikes in Iran have achieved their objective but has warned it now has greater aerial freedom to strike again. Israel pounded Iran with a series of airstrikes early on Saturday and explosions could be heard in the Iranian capital, Tehran. The attack risks pushing the archenemies closer to all-out war at a time of spiraling violence across the Middle East, where militant groups backed by Iran are already at war with Israel. Daniel Hagari said, Iran attacked Israel twice, including in locations that endangered civilians, and has paid the price for it. We are focused on our war objectives in the Gaza Strip and Lebanon. It is Iran that continues to push for a wider regional escalation. The targets that were struck were selected from a broad target bank, targets of various types, and we will be able to select additional targets from it and strike them if required. The White House warned Tehran against retaliation, saying the strikes should end the direct exchange of fire between Israel and Iran. לפני זמן קצר מטוסינו שבו הביתה בשלום לאחר שתקפו מטרות צבאיות באיראן. זאת בתגובה להתקפות של איראן לעבר מדינת ישראל בחודשים האחרונים. תקיפת התגובה הושלמה ומטרותיה הושגו. בהנחיית הדרג המדיני תקפנו באופן מדויק וממוקד מטרות באזורים שונים באיראן. בהן אמצעי ייצור טילים אותם איראן שיגרה לעבר מדינת ישראל בהתקפותיה בשנה האחרונה. במקביל, תקפנו את מערכי טילי הקרקע אוויר ויכולות אוויריות של איראן, יכולות שנועדו להגביל את חופש הפעולה האווירי של ישראל לפעולה באיראן. כעת, יש למדינת ישראל חופש פעולה אווירי רחב יותר גם באיראן. איראן תקפה את ישראל פעמיים. כולל במקומות שסיכנו אזרחים, ושילמה על כך את המחיר. אנחנו ממוקדים במטרות המלחמה בעזה ובלבנון. איראן היא זו שממשיכה לדחוף להסלמה אזורית רחבה. המטרות שהותקפו נבחרו מתוך בנק מטרות רחב, מטרות מסוגים שונים, ואנחנו נדע לבחור ממנו מטרות נוספות, ולתקוף אותן במידה ונידרש לכך. זהו מסר ברור, מי שיאיים על מדינת ישראל ישלם על כך מחיר כבד. אנחנו מקיימים הערכת מצב מתמשכת ובשלב זה אין שינוי בהנחיות פיקוד העורף. אתם נדרשים להמשיך ולהישמע להנחיות פיקוד העורף כפי שעשיתם לאורך כל המלחמה. צה"ל נמצא במוכנות שיא בהתקפה ובהגנה. הוכחנו היום, פעם נוספת, את היכולת שלנו לתקוף בכל מקום בו נבחר ובכל זמן בו נבחר. צה"ל עושה ויעשה כל מה שנדרש על מנת להגן על אזרחי מדינת ישראל. The Israeli army says that four soldiers have been killed in combat with Hezbollah militants in southern Lebanon. In a statement released Thursday, the Israeli military said 11 other troops were wounded during fighting with Hezbollah the day before, without elaborating on what happened. The announcement makes Wednesday one of the deadliest days of Israel's offensive in Lebanon, which it invaded over three weeks ago after a year of exchanging cross-border fire with Hezbollah. Israel has expanded its campaign in the country on its northern border, increasing airstrikes against Hezbollah targets across the country.
Israel's military casualties have begun to climb in southern Lebanon, with another four soldiers killed by a Hezbollah drone attack earlier this month. In a speech Thursday, Israel's military chief lieutenant Jen Herzi Halavai signaled that Israel hoped to wrap up its operations in Lebanon. In the north, there's a possibility of reaching a sharp conclusion, Halavai said. We thoroughly dismantled Hezbollah's senior chain of command. Russian President Vladimir Putin held a press conference at the conclusion of the BRICS summit in Kazan. Putin was repeatedly asked about the continuing hostilities between Moscow and Kiev and Kursk operation. The Russian army is acting confidently in all directions, this is also well known, no one denies it, it is moving forward in all areas of the combat contact line. It is also actively working in the Kursk direction. Part of the Ukrainian army unit that invaded the Kursk region is blocked, surrounded, this is approximately 2,000 people. Attempts are being made to unblock this group from the outside, to break through from the inside, so far unsuccessfully. The Russian army has begun to eliminate this group, Putin said. Recall, military units from North Korea have left their Russian training grounds and entered the zone of combat between Russian and Ukraine forces for the first time, the Military Defense Intelligence Service of Ukraine said. They will fight against Ukrainians in Kursk. Putin has not confirmed or denied the presence of North Korean troops in his country. At the BRICS summit, the Kremlin leader said it was not Russia's actions that led to the escalation, and accused Western countries of helping Ukraine fight Moscow. Instead, he recalled that Russia's parliament had ratified an agreement on a comprehensive strategic partnership with North Korea, signed by Putin in Pyongyang this summer, where both promise mutual assistance in case of aggression against one of the signatories. Let's see how this process goes, Putin said. While the Kremlin has insisted that Russia has the right to enter into any military cooperation it wishes with North Korea, and that any military activity is not aimed at third countries, Pyongyang has dismissed the news that North Korean troops are primed to enter Russia's war as groundless rumors. Kiev and Seoul say Moscow is planning to involve thousands of North Korean troops in its full-scale war.